In previous video, Victor Kunchak, professor of the AC School at EPFL, discussed the importance and the basics of program verification. Today, we'll dive a little bit more into the details of one of the leading approaches to program verification called abstract interpretation. If you have a, a, a simple program, you can often represent it using something like a flowchart and uh, where you have uh, nodes that correspond to positions in the program and then on the address you have uh, some statements. For example, this statement would initialize variable x to zero. And then uh, if you have a loop, that would be represented as a cycle in, the, in this flowchart. So, uh, for example, uh, let me have a loop that's incrementing this uh, variable by two, like this. And uh, typically, uh, you, you only want to, to loop while some condition is satisfied. So I'm going to insert here a test that says I'm going to loop only, let's say, while the, uh, the value is less than 10. Okay. And then uh, when the value is bigger than 10, which I'll denote by this, or bigger than equal to 10, let's say, then I'm going to jump out of the loop. So this represents a program that loops a few times and then goes there. And uh, any uh, imperative program can be represented using su such graph. Uh, that means that also some programs that uh, we m may not know uh, how long they take to execute uh, would be represented by such programs. And uh, in general, answering the question of what are the sets of values of variables at the different program points is undecidable. As we discussed it previously, this undecidability is due to the halting problem and Rice's theorem. So what we can do uh, in order to have some algorithm that terminates is uh, uh, come up with some set of useful approximations. And let's, let's look at approximation that uh, approximates sets of uh, integer values. Uh, suppose that we have here the numbers minus 1 plus 1, minus 10 plus 10, and maybe we add minus 9 and, and, and plus 9 here as well, and I'll write here minus infinity and plus infinity, okay? And then uh, for each of the, uh, these endpoints, including plus and minus infinity, I'll have an interval. For example, I could have an interval between 0 and 10, okay? Okay, so, uh, and if I have finite number of endpoints, end I'll have finite number of these intervals. So instead of considering arbitrary sets, which is what exact interpretation would do, that's what program execution does, uh, we can interpret this program as operating on intervals. Exact semantics, we, we would have a set of values 0, and then if we go around the loop, we would have here 2, 4, 6, 8, and then uh, it, we, we would have the value 10, but 10 would not pass this test, so it, it would exit here. So this would be the number. Don't forget that we're discussing a very simple example where computations are tractable. But in general, the computations can be so overwhelming that following each step of the computation would be simply useless. Using an abstraction, we would just replace a, a set like this with an interval between 0 and, and 10. And basically, because the number of intervals is, is bounded, and as we consider longer and longer executions, uh, we would have uh, bigger and bigger intervals, because we are always accumulating the, the possible scenarios, the possible states. Let's pause here. The set of intervals of this abstract interpretation has a very nice property. It's what we call a lattice. I won't go into all of the technical details, but you can see on this figure that it forms a directed graph with larger intervals on top. Now, what the abstract interpretation does is that it records for each node of the flow chart a lattice interval that contains the range of values that variables can take at this node. At each step of the abstract interpretation computation, the lattice intervals of the nodes get updated depending on their current values, as well as on the lattice intervals of incoming flowchart nodes. In this process, lattice intervals can only grow larger, but because the lattice is finite, they cannot grow indefinitely. At some point, the computed lattice intervals will necessarily be the same as in the previous computation step. This will correspond to a fixed point, and this fixed point of the lattice is a bound guarantee for the values of the variables at different nodes. 
we have successfully constructed a program that always terminates and that always provides some correct information about the algorithm that's being analyzed. So you, if you interpret program over intervals, you will uh, terminate in a finite amount of time. And this is why abstract interpretation is so useful, as opposed to a naive exact interpretation approach that analyzes the exact sequence of computation and that as a result may or may not terminate, we know for sure that its abstract interpretation counterpart will always terminate, eventually. You will uh, learn some intervals that are uh, intervals to which all the possible values at that program point belong, but uh, maybe uh, the, the actual intervals are, the actual sets are smaller than those intervals. Nonetheless, you can answer some useful questions. For example, you may know here that x value of x will always be non-negative, and that might be useful so you know that negative values don't arise. Maybe negative values would lead your program to crash. For example, an infamous example is a Ariane 5 rocket explosion that crashed due to a floating point overflow exception. And so uh, even such simple properties uh, such as ranges of values are Im important to, uh, to prevent uh, program crashes. So our abstraction function takes any kinds of contents that the operational semantics operates over and abstracts those into whatever um, domain we want to do our analysis over. When you try to establish more complicated properties, typically you want to take into account the program and the property that you want to establish at the same time and then sort of go both from the program and from the property. This is often called property-directed approach to verification or analysis.